Hi, y'all. I'm Melissa Ushika, the PM for the Access team, and I wanted to talk to you today about a new feature that we just released called SAML Groups Inc. and show you how it works and talk about the next steps as far as iterating on this feature. Uh, so SAML Group Sync has been a highly requested feature because today we use SSO only for authentication and not for authorization. So a lot of enterprise customers have uh, pretty complex setups in their IDP where all users are part of groups and, and groups really are what define their uh, authorization and all their different tools and GitLab today isn't able um, to read that data and um, control authorization based on it. Um, so what's going to happen now is that GitLab will be aware of groups in an IDP and will be able to grant access at different levels to different groups, depending on um, what data we see in SAML assertions. So let me show you what that looks like. So I have an SSO enabled group here called uh, Melissa SSO on gitlab.com. Uh, and that's one important piece is that this functionality is only available today on gitlab.com. Um, we'll be working to make that available in uh, self-managed. So you see here in security, uh, once you have SSO enabled, you get this menu called SAML group links. So if I click on it, uh, you can see that you can specify a group name in this and I'm using Azure as the I IDP for my um, testing. Um, you put this long GUID and you can define what access level people should have that have this um, group in their SSO uh, assertion. So uh, if I find this, I make a maintainer. As part of a setup, um, so this is one part of the setup right on the GitLab side. On the IDP side, there's a couple of things that you need to do. One is in your attributes and claims, you have to add a group claim. And for our implementation, we look for this specific name, so groups. And this is just to simplify things on our side across providers, right? But for most providers, it's pretty straightforward to customize what that name should be. Um, so I've added the group claims. Um, so now it's sent over in the SSO um, assertion to GitLab. And then also you need to have users in groups. Uh, so I have this uh, specific user called Dushikov test that is part of the security and the product group. And on the GitLab side, to make things simply um, uh, for the demo, I just did a one-to-one -one reflection of the groups in my IDP, in my groups in GitLab. Obviously people can do more complicated things, but I wanted to keep it simple. So as a reminder, I have a security group and I've mapped it to this uh, name, which is uh, this one over here, right? So the D, whatever. All right, so now the fun part. So this is a GitLab user. So this is the Ushakov test user that we've been playing with. And you see here that they're part of the product group, but they're not part of the security group because uh, I updated that right before this demo. So one thing to be aware of with the functionality as it stands today is that we basically need to have an SSO interaction for groups to be reflected on and updated on the GitLab side. So if someone's just clicking around and doing their normal work, they won't see groups updated. But if you follow the SSO link through your IDP and you basically trigger an SSO handshake, you'll see that groups are updated. So as a reminder, I put a link, a group link to be maintainer if you encounter the um, group uh, security. Um, so there you go. This is a big deal because um, basically now there's one single place to manage group memberships, which is on your IDP. And as long as you've configured the group links on the GitLab side, now you can uh, ensure proper membership in the groups uh, on GitLab according to your permissions. Um, so as you can see, there's a couple of um, next steps as far as iterating on this feature. One is making this available for self-managed. Two is uh, today on GitLab.com, there's a seven day check 
on um, your SAML, and that was just introduced in the last couple of weeks. So every seven days, we require that users basically go through the SAML flow to ensure that they still have access uh, on their IDP. That is uh, pretty long for um, some customers. So one is, uh, can we make that shorter on GitLab.com without um, hurting the user experience? So we're gonna be looking into how to make that um, SSO check uh, seamless. And two, uh, giving that timeout window uh, option, uh, have that be configurable at the group level. So if a specific group um, has group, um, group links or they're just very security conscious, if they wanna have their users go through a check every few hours, right? They have the option to do that. Um, but we leave kind of like the default pretty long um, in general for GitLab.com. Uh, so again, this feature is a big deal because it's the uh, first time that SSO is not just for authentication, but also for authorization. And it makes um, setup a lot more simple for big enterprises that are already using their IDPs for authorization um, in you know, all their tools. Uh, so thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment on the SAML epic that I'm gonna link in this video. Thanks.